What up ladies and gents, this is going to be the phase 2 ranking as a healer consumables video and essentially I'm going to talk about every consumable you might find useful uh, whether you're solo or ranking in a group. Some of them are pretty much must-haves uh, and then there's others that are a little bit more optional uh, depending on how much gold you have and how much you've farmed. Uh, and I'm going to split them into kind of two categories. The first being combat potions. These are potions you're going to use depending on what happens in the battle or what you're facing. And usually they're kind of spur of the moment things you're going to want to use relatively quickly to kind of sway the tide of the battle and, and put it in your favor. And the second kind of category is going to be buff potions. And you're just going to have these uh, up at all times to make your character stronger, essentially. And, and most of the, for the most part, more tanky. As a priest, we're going to get a lot of attention. Uh, so we want as much stamina and armor and general tankiness as we can get. So to start off, we've got Dark Runes and Demonic Runes, and they essentially give you mana at the cost of health. So you've got to use these kind of carefully, potentially towards the end of combat. If, you, if you're running out of mana and you're in a safe position, then these are a good, uh, a good item to use. Obviously, the alternatives being Whipper Root, giving you a uh, direct amount of health, or Night Dragons, giving you a little bit of health, a little bit of mana. So... The Whipper Roots and the Night Dragons actually are farmed in Felwood. And I'll chuck a map up on the screen. This is where all the spawns are. And the spawns have a 25 minute cooldown. Uh, and the way it works is if the herb is, is spawned and then doesn't get picked for a certain amount of time, not exactly sure what the amount of time is, but you get a fair, fair grace period, then the plant will become corrupted and you need to use the cleanse uh, to be able to pick it. But if you get there quick enough, i.e. after the 25 minute timer from the last time it was picked, then you'll just be able to pick another cleansed one. And essentially you can go around Felwood, uh, marking down the timers for all the different plants if they're up, uh, as you pick them. And farm a lot of Whipper Roots and Night Dragons this way. Uh, and they all share cooldowns. So the Dark Rune, the Whipper Root and the, and the Night Dragons all share a, a cooldown together. So pick which one you want to use wisely. Uh, the next we've got is Major Mana and Major Healing Potion. And the Major Mana Potion costs 3 Dreamfall, 2 Ice Cap, made with alchemy. Uh, the Major Healing costs 2 Golden Sansam and 1 Mountain Silver Sage. Now I would recommend saving your mats rather than making these potions because the price of them at the moment is quite low with all the people farming Tribute. Uh, the tribute chest generally drops a fair few mana potions and healing potions, so there's always some up, the, up on the auction house, and the price is consistently getting driven down. This may go up towards the start of uh, the rank, so be sure to grab as many as you can while they're cheap. Now, bear in mind, these are on the potion cooldown, uh, which is two minutes, and there are a bunch of other really useful potions on this cooldown, so you need to be careful with using a health or mana potion too early and then not being able to use something else a little bit later in the fight. Uh, the first of these is the restorative potion which is super useful uh, if you're facing a mage for example. And what this will do is will put a buff on you for 30 seconds that will remove uh, magic uh, let's see what else it is. magic curse and poison uh, and disease every five seconds for 30 seconds. So what you can do is when you're about to get polyed, if you don't have your Skull of Impending Doom equipped or you've already used it, you can use this potion. Uh, and this will remove you from the poly uh, when it next ticks. Giving you a chance to kind of disrupt the, the mage's plans and keep your teammates alive. Now the next is Limited Invulnerability Potion. And this is more for if you're getting trained by melee uh, you're in trouble, you know, you've got a couple of melee on you, maybe a rogue or a warrior, something like that. Uh, you're getting a little bit low, you don't really have anything available to you, and you want to stay alive a little bit longer to, to try and, you know, sway the tide of the battle, let your team kind of do more damage to them, maybe kill their healers, something like that. Um, so the limited invulnerability potion comes in really strong then, and if there are no casters on the other team, this actually will prevent any sort of physical interrupts on you as well. So you can actually drop, you know, to like 1k health, something like that. Not have shield available. Uh, no desperate prayer, anything like that. You can pop one of these and heal up to full. 
uh, assuming you don't get like earth shocked or siest or something like that so this is a really big kind of recovery cooldown that you can use uh, when times are rough so keep that one in mind for sure that's going to be a big one uh, the next one we got is free action potion and this is two black mouth oil and one strangle kelp and relatively cheap to make I'd say relatively it's probably about a gold potion at the moment black mouth oil is is about 40 to 40 to 50 silver um maybe a bit over a gold maybe maybe 150 something like that uh, depending on your server but it's uh it's a really strong uh freedom and anti stun for 30 seconds so if there are a lot of uh a lot of melee coming at you you can immune any of the stuns and you know potentially have your nifty stopwatch equipped something like that and uh, give them the run around potentially this can be better than you know a limited and vulnerability potion uh, if you have the nifty stopwatch it really depends on on the situation but if you can force the enemy melee to go really deep to commit onto you then you can potentially get some easy kills on them and if you're kiting around with move speed and freedom they're going to have a really hard time actually doing any damage to you. Um, so I'd say this is more of a preventative measure, whereas the limited invulnerability is more of a recovery measure. Uh, the last two being Invis Potion and Swiftness Potion. And the Invis Potion can be really good to get an engage. Uh, I believe, actually, this doesn't share cooldown with other potions, but not 100% sure on that one. I'm going to have to check. Um, and the Swiftness Potion... I'm pretty sure it does share a cooldown with other potions, so be careful how you use this. Uh, this can be, you know, you can use this in dire times late, late on in combat to get away. Uh, it's it's going to be a really specific cases, maybe smaller scale combat if you just want to use something cheap, something like that. Um, and then obviously the Invis potion can be used out of combat uh, to kind of get the jump on teams, go into a really unpredictable position, something like that. The interesting thing about the Invis Potion, you have two different ones. You have the Lesser and the Regular. They share a two-minute cooldown between them. Um, but the ten-minute cooldown on them is individual. So you can actually rotate them. Uh, if you've used one recently, you can use another one after two minutes. Uh, next, we're on to Grenades and the Grenade cooldown. Uh, we start with the Sapper. Sapper is one of your main kind of tools for clearing out large amounts of enemies. Um, if everyone on your team has one, you can provide a lot of AoE damage to big clusters of enemies on the opposing faction and catch them unawares. So this is, uh, this is a big one. Uh, and this the total cost for this is two major weave, one mithril, and eight stone um, in order to create the unstable trigger. Um, and the solid blasting power needed, uh, powder sorry, needed for it. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's a big one. Definitely have a few of those uh, on tap, as they can come in really handy and really change and and put battles in your favor, even if you're heavily outnumbered. Uh, the next obviously is iron grenades and thorium grenades. Thorium grenades essentially doing the same thing but more damage uh, at the cost of more resources. So if you're rich, go for the thorium. If not, go for the iron, I would say. Uh, the mats for iron are one iron bar, one heavy blasting powder, one silk cloth. And then we've got three thorium bars, three rune cloth, three dense blasting powder, and one thorium widget for the thorium grenade. And that still actually makes three grenades, so it's not too bad. But the total being six thorium, four rune cloth, six dense stones for that. And then the last one we have is actually... Uh, a little bit more obscure, it's Magic Dust, and this shares a one-minute cooldown with the grenades. Um, and what this does is it's essentially a, uh, a sleep that lasts for 30 seconds. And you can use it essentially on demand if you feared like an undead or something. They've used their Will of the Forsaken. Uh, you can wait a little bit for it to fade. Um, wait for the DRs to fall, and then you can pop this magic dust on an undead rogue, for example, and you're going to get him off your back for a good 30 seconds unless he gets dispelled or somebody breaks it. It actually breaks to damage. So this can be a really useful tool if some of your other uh, potion cooldowns to survive are actually on cooldown. You can use this 
as a last resort. They're expensive. You can farm them from the Dust Devils in Westfall, um, but they're not easy to farm by any means. It takes uh, takes some time and uh, dedication to get them. Uh, and the last ones being Elixir of Poison Resistance and Strong Anti-Venom. And these are actually off uh, any sort of potion cooldown. The Strong Anti-Venom has its own cooldown. Uh, I believe it's a minute. The benefit of that being it's targetable. You can actually use that on teammates. And the cost of it is one large Venom Sack for three Strong Anti-Venoms. Whereas the Elixir is one large Venom Sack per one Elixir. So it's a little bit more expensive and you can only use it on yourself. But the Elixir doesn't have a cool line at all. So if you're getting Viper Stinged back to back, you can uh, pop a few of these in a row to just preserve your mana long enough for the Hunter to give up or die. Um, so they're pretty important for uh, Priest. Obviously, you start with the Stone Form. And if they're persistent, then you, uh, you pop a few of these and they're going to save your mana big time. Next, we are on to buff potions. I'm going to start with Elixir of Superior Defense. And most of these are getting us, you know, the stamina, making us a bit tankier. Uh, and the Elixir of Superior Defense giving us a bunch of armor. I think it's 450 armor is uh, definitely a good start. Uh, and that's one stone, st yeah, one sun grass and one stone scale oil, uh, which is not actually too expensive. Um Depending on the price of stone scale oil, sungrass sun grass is usually quite cheap. Next, we've got Elixir of Fortitude. And this is one wild steel bloom, one gold thorn. Again, quite cheap to make. It gives you 120 HP, um, which is essentially the same as the buff food, which is next. is 12 stam, 12 spirit. And there's a bunch of different ones that you can go for. Uh, I've just got tender wolf steak down here for now. Um... But you can also go for, you know, spider sausage, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I think it's I think it's two spider sausage is two white spider meats. Uh, or you can go for tender wolf steak, one tender wolf meat, uh, and a soothing spice. Uh, either is fine, but giving you a you know another twelve stamina is definitely something you should be having up for the most part in combat, not purgeable. Um, so it's just going to help you, you know, survive when you're getting trained by melee. It's a big deal. Uh, then we've also got Rumsey Rum. Uh, make sure you're using Black Label because that is going to give you the most stamina and it stacks with everything. Uh, it's a 15 stamina stamina buff. That's essentially quite cheap, um, but it depends again on your server. Um, but I would highly recommend it. Uh, the last of the buffs that I would recommend are a little bit more expensive. And they're going to be the protection potions. So you've got Shadow, Frost, Fire, Arcane, and Nature. Uh, Shadow most likely being the most expensive, potentially fire as well, because that sees a lot of use at the moment with Molten Core. Shadow and Nature probably going to go up in the future. Frost and Arcane are generally a little bit cheaper. Um, feel free to kind of pop whichever ones of these you feel is appropriate to the situation. Uh, they are on the pot cooldown, so be aware that you're not going to be able to pop anything else afterwards. So maybe you can pre-buff them. They last an hour. Um, and, and kind of hope for the best. It, again, it depends how much resources you've got and uh, what, you know, the, the other teams are kind of looking like in terms of classes in, in your area. If you're going to fight this, you know, similar teams quite a lot, uh, you're kind of going to get a feel for, you know, they're quite Warlock heavy. I'm going to maybe pop a Shadow Pot, something like that. Uh, then you've obviously got Heavy Rune Cloth Bandages. Um, doesn't really need... Uh, much much explanation, everyone knows about that. Uh, and finally, we've got Lung Juice. And Lung Juice is actually unique. Um, you'll get a buff when handing in the quest. It's a quest in Blasted Lands. You'll get a buff when you hand it in. It's 25 stam. Uh, and you actually get a an item as well that's unique. And you can then pop that again. It lasts an hour. You can pop that an hour, an hour later for uh, a rebuff. And this costs three Blasted Boar Lungs, two Scorepock pincers. pincers one basilisk brain, uh, which generally comes to maybe like eight gold, something like that, eight to ten gold at the moment on my server at least. It depends how uh, heavily camped Blasted Lands is, how keen for PvP your server is, that sort of stuff. But usually these mobs are pretty heavily contested, so make sure you use this wisely. Uh, it's it's nice extra stamina, but it's comes at a price. 
obviously, if we're talking about price and you're going whole hog, then Flask of the Titans. But I haven't added it to this list because right now it's not really going to be used much in World PvP by anyone that isn't a millionaire. So I've left that one off. But yeah, that's all the uh, the consumables that I've kind of put together and, and decided I want to give a bit of attention during the phase two rank. If you've got any anything that you think I've left off, please let me know in the comments. It'd be super useful. I can update the uh, the guide on Deathblind. There will be a text version on there. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to kind of get a, a quick look at something that has all the information on, then I'll put it up on Deathblind. Uh, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.